Hey everyone, that's Christoph here with eZip. The Windows Virtual Desktop Spring Update is in public preview, and I thought I'd take this opportunity to walk you through the uh, steps to set it up and point out what is easier, what is different, um, why everybody basically now can set up their own Windows Virtual Desktop environment. Now, the main benefit is that all the GUI and all the configuration is now part of the Azure portal. So you can really just go in your Azure portal and create your own Windows Virtual Desktop environment. To get that started, what you need to do is add the uh, resource provider. So go to your subscription. There we go, subscription. Um, I just picked the one pay as you go here for my environment and go to my resource providers and simply search by desktop or virtualization. Um, it's the same thing you get the provider here and click on register. Now, this will take a couple of seconds. Um, so hit a refresh a few times or just come back at a later point. Okay, the Microsoft Desktop Virtualization Provider is installed, which means now I can use my Azure portal and simply configure my Windows Virtual Desktop environment. Um, just type WVD in here and you see Windows Virtual Desktop as one of the services now. And you're being greeted with this overview, which is really great because you can simply click on create a host pool and a wizard guides you through all the steps that you need to do. What you will see a few point, a few points is you don't have to really finish everything at once, right? So you can configure one piece and then you can pick a, configure another piece at another time and bring them together. So that makes it really easy. Um, you see here on the left, we can configure our host pools, we can configure our application groups and then the workspaces. Now workspaces will contain the application groups and obviously the host pools will then host your users. And you can also do your user assignment right from here. So the easiest way to get started, my experience was just click on overview, click on create a host pool and follow the steps that are being asked here. So first we pick our resource group, um, we're using this one here and we pick a host pool name. I like just using easy here for, for me internally to remember and I'm going to pick the West US location. So Microsoft will be rolling out more locations to keep the metadata, uh, which means now instead of having all your, your users metadata and, and session data in the United States, um, this data will also then be available in the region that you pick. Um, so initially they say it will be in the US more locations and then it will be more locations in Europe and then from there, the rest of the world. Now the host pool type, I will pick a pool pool, um, meaning that I don't assign a user to a specific desktop. I just say I got these computing resources. I got this many users, you figure it out. And I don't want to have more than five sessions here. Obviously it's a, it's a little lab environment, nothing overly realistic in regards of scaling. Um, I want to add my virtual machines right away. So that's one of the points where you could just say no and then you add the virtual machines later um, to your host pool or you just create them right away. Um, to keep things simple, I just keep the default settings here. I just want one virtual machine, that's fine. My prefix will be virtual machine easy, so I know what it is. And the image is from the gallery and just my Windows 10 enterprise multi-session image. I don't have to change the disk. I don't have to change the networks. Um, of course, you can do whatever you need to do here to make it work in your environment. And the only thing I have to enter here at the bottom is the Azure Active Directory domain user um, or an admin that is allowed to join these virtual machines to the Azure Active Directory domain. Okay, next. Now here we can create a workspace. Um, either we already have a workspace or we want to create a new one. Um, so I want to register the desktop app group. That means users can have a full desktop. If you say no, then they don't get a full desktop. You can then later publish apps specifically for them. Um, I don't have a workspace, so I'm going to create a new one. I just call that the easy workspace. Click on OK. And next, I could give a tag for easier finding the resources, but it's, it's just a small environment, so I don't really need that. So let's review and create. Um, Azure is validating my settings, making sure everything looks good. And when that is the case, then just click create and the deployment will be started. Okay, and as you can see, we're already done. Deployment is completed and I can now simply go to the resource um, and configure from here some more. Now, we're not going to, to configure the, the host pool here, the virtual machine. So let me jump back to my Windows Virtual Desktop resource and go from here. So we have a host pool now. That's the one we just created um, called Easy Windows Virtual Desktop TP. WVD TP is the resource group. Um, 
And inside this host pool now, we can have our application groups. So by default, we said we want to have that desktop group. So that one is already here, but it's not assigned to a user yet. Um, so there, there are several ways to, to do that. One of them is just click on assignment and search for the user. Now I created a user for this demo just called Spring. Uh, we don't have that one yet, so sorry. To click on add and then search for the user Spring. And here you can see one of the big differences, um, one of the big improvements is you can assign user groups. So not just individual users, as you would have to do with the PowerShell commands, but you can also assign whole groups. So I can just assign this whole AEDDC admin group. And now every member of that group will also have access to that desktop. Um, now, what you can also do is simply create an application group for published apps. Very easy to do. Select your resource group, select your host pool, and then just give it a name. So in my case, I want to use paint. We want to assign it. Again, we can assign it to a user or to a group. Um, I'm going to assign it to Spring. Next, pick the actual application. Now here you can pick it from, from the start menu or if you have the file path, then can, you can do the file path obviously directly. Um, I said I want to use Paint, there we go. Give it a description, I don't really care about that much. And just save it. Okay, and then we want to register this application in the work in the workspace, easy workspace. And the last thing is again, we can give text, don't need that here. Do a quick review and then tell Azure to create it. Okay, and last thing here, let me just go back. Um, here's my workspace. I could create multiple workspaces. I don't really need to. As you can see in my workspace, um, I can configure properties here, um, give it a name, things like that, copy things. Um, I can manage my application groups from within here. Now we did that from outside, obviously. Um, we created the paint group. So let's see if that paint group has the right users assigned to it. And just to show you a different way, I'm using this users tab here on the left. I search for my user. Again, I could also search for group. There we go. I go to my assignments and I see yep, assigned to both of them. I can also take them from here if I don't want to, this user to have access to both. I can also see the session for this user. Right now there are no sessions for that user. And the last thing to do is actually have that user log in. So let me open a private browser tab here and go to the remote desktop. Okay, and I'm logging in with Spring. Okay, and we can see the published app as well as the desktop is already here. So let me just log into the desktop. I don't want the printer, I just want the clipboard and logging, uh, log in with my credentials for Spring. Okay, and he, here's my desktop. So really, really convenient, really easy to use. Um, let me just log out here for a second. I wanna show you one more thing. Um, you saw the um, little window pop up that said um, clipboard and, and printer redirection. Um, with the spring update here, you have the option to configure that for your whole host pool. Just go to your pool, go to the properties, and then click on RDP settings. And here you can see, yes, I want the clipboard. I never want the printers. I never want the smart cards. I don't want any audio back and forth. Um, COM ports are already off. We're good. Simply save it. And then, okay. And you see the print option is not there anymore. Just hit allow. And now I'm logging in to that published app without having to configure that I want my printers not to be redirected. Okay, and you see here, that's my published app inside of my web browser. Well, that's it from my side. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, if you got any questions or would like to learn more about how you then can actually print from those Windows Virtual Desktops, um, let me know. Send me an email or contact us here at www.ezip.com. I'm looking forward to showing you the next update in the future. Bye-bye.